Hey guys, Rich Page, our Gemathan Timber Frame Company, the main timber framer. Today I want to talk a little bit about our Sawmill Woodmiser LT40 uh, Super Hydraulic Wireless Control, but I want to talk a little bit about dust collection. I want to show you the setup we have, and uh, for if you, those of you that are timber framing and have a sawmill, will give you some ideas on dust collection if you don't have any. So let me turn the camera around and show you what we have. So coming off our wood miser over here, we're coming into a four inch flex hose. Uh, this is something you can buy on Amazon. And uh, some people say it's gonna be super duper rugged performance type flex hose. Uh, this is standard hose. I can't remember the company I bought it from. I think I've had this on this mill at least five years and it's taken everything this mill can, can give out. I've recently noticed a couple cracks in it, so it's probably getting time to replace it. But after five years, I think I've got my money's worth. So coming down through here. So one of the things to look at is when you're coming off your chute, what I've done here is underneath this uh, Gorilla Tape, I don't know if I can see it here or not. I've got a, well, maybe you can see a little bit of it right here. I've got a four inch rubber plumbing uh, hose adapter. So I came, I put the hose, I put the flex hose on here. Then I put this rubber adapter to make this curve here more gentle for this hose so at some point in time it doesn't want to break and crack and split up in this area here so there's a rubber adapter here the hose is underneath it and then i just put some flex tape on there because i've got a couple hose clamps on there and i don't like to walk by and get stuck with the hose clamps so coming off the mill uh i've got the hose one of the things i want to show i'm going to step back a little bit here and i've got a trolley cable and you'll notice on the top of my sawmill up here you'll see uh, I've got a little piece of flat stock steel, got an eye bolt, I've got, a, uh, I've got a hook on this end, I think this might be quarter inch stainless cable. Right here for a trolley that's moving my hose, a uh, little trolley, if you look on this side here, you can take out the pin, can I see it? Yeah, you can take out the, the pin and uh, take the wheel off if you need to, or put it on so you don't have to take your line down every time you do it. Down on this end, I'm just gonna walk down here real quick. Uh, down on this end, you're gonna see I've got a turnbuckle, and the turnbuckle allows you to take up some tension on that cable to keep it taut. You don't wanna be you know, reefing this thing together and pulling your, your sawmill building apart, but that's gonna keep it pretty much taut so that your hose uh, can do the work and uh, it doesn't get all slack on you. This is uh, my blower assembly up here. What I'm running is a two horsepower, 240 volt motors running 3450 RPM. So four inches here. It's actually, you can you can see a little bit of, it, bit of it here. I wish I could uh, zoom in. Maybe I can, no, I can't. Uh, but it's got, it's a 10 inch blower. I've got it neck down to uh, six and then down to four for this hose. So it's got plenty of power to suck up all the sawdust that's coming off this mill, believe it or not. So I don't really have any problem with excess sawdust. Um, you're gonna get your typical sawdust coming off your blade, but in general, this handles all the sawdust. Goes up in here. What I've got for this coming out is, this is some old drainage tile. Uh, probably the cheapest pipe at the time you could buy. It's a four inch pipe. So I've got it coming out of the blower motor. I'm gonna come by through here. And then I've got it going into a dust deputy here. And the dust deputy flows down to uh, a little assembly that I've made that bags the sawdust. Uh, the bag sawdust is in back here and it's a 42 gallon bucket it goes into. I sell that to our farmers and people with uh, livestock animals. But what I did was I took a cover, <coughs> 42 inch trash can and uh, uh, cut it out. I made a uh, wood frame. You'll see here where I've screwed the frame on the other side and then I've got the opening here. So now if I put the cover on top of my bucket like this, I put this bag on there and the bag also helps diffuse uh, the pressure coming from the blower. So that way when you when it blows into the bucket, it doesn't try to blow the cover off the bucket and put the sawdust everywhere. A couple of things I had put in place years ago and it seems to be okay is I put I put a T here and uh, I put these cloth pieces here again to diffuse some of the pressure coming through and on top same thing if I had to get in there and, and unplug it I just put a piece of cloth there to keep the dust in but if I want to take that hose clamp off if for any reason it gets plugged up I can go up there and put a snake down through it 
Uh, dust deputy, a cyclone works good. Uh, again, it's really taking, dissipating the pressure coming off the blower for the most part. Uh, you'll notice over here I've got another pipe line that's not connected. Over here in my sawdust area, when I get full, I might have I might have 200 bags and it's stacked to the ceiling over here. If it gets full and uh, nobody's buying sawdust, uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the line going to the dust deputy. I'm going to connect it to the line that you see here, and then that's going to blow it over into a bin. There's no cyclone. This is my edger area here. It's going to come down the pipe here and just get blown into this bin here. Uh, just loose sawdust if that doesn't work. So a couple things I wanted to show is I wanted to show the uh, the dust deputy coming off using a, a four inch uh, pipe for for plumbing. Pretty straightforward. It's not a Schedule 40, so it's the you know it's a cheap drain tile pipe, but it worked good. Went together good. It doesn't really leak of any consequence where you get sawdust blown out. You put a cable up here. Put your put your trolley on your cable. The other thing that's important here is I'm running the LT40 with a 12 foot extension. So you want to take your blower and basically center your blower uh, in the middle of your sawmill track. I'm gonna run this sawmill down the track briefly. I'm gonna show you what happens here with your hose. You're gonna see that the hose and on this swivel, the hose will actually swivel and then carry on beyond the halfway point. So putting that blower at the halfway point is critical. So that way you don't have a lot of hose that might be dragging on the ground uh, and so forth. So let me, uh, let me turn this thing on. I'm just getting on the battery mode. Make sure there's nothing in the way. Looks good to me. And and away we go. So we're gonna we're gonna go down the track here. And you're gonna see see a little bit of this black pipe I put on there. That's some more drain tile. I've got to change the position a little bit. So if it drags, if the hose drags on the ground, I like it dragging on that black plastic so it doesn't wear a hole in the pipe. So now if you notice up here, the sawmill has gone the other direction, and what it's done basically is it's turned this turnbuckle uh, 180 degrees and it keeps on going blower stays where it is and it reduces the amount of hose that you need so that's something there uh, again something I didn't point out but put some of this black PVC uh, drain tile cut it you know you can cut it in half or just have it uh, wire tied on your hose so if your hose drags on the ground uh, it's going to drag on that black and wear that out before your hose so that's the sawmill uh, dust collection system here at the I. Jemathan Timber Frame Company. Thought I'd share that with you to spur some ideas. Give me some feedback. Click like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching.